is Arthur Stanley Eddington, head of the Cambridge Observatory, known all around the world as one of the most brilliant minds in astronomy. The war has taken a heavy toll on Eddington and his fellow Quakers, nearly all of whom morally opposed the war and refused to fight the Germans. He's one of the few men left. It's just him and the women. Day by day, men were disappearing from these benches. Not because they were going off to fight in the war, but because they were being arrested for being conscientious objectors. Anti-German feeling cripples scientific communication. Eddington knows nothing of Einstein's new theory until February 1916, when he receives a package from a colleague in the neutral Netherlands, astronomer Willem de Sitter. Inside is a copy of Einstein's paper that de Sitter has translated into English. Eddington opens it up and realizes immediately that he's seeing something of tremendous scientific significance. And he writes back to de Sitter, no one in England knows about this, no one. So he asks de Sitter, tell me about this Einstein. De Sitter says, well, Einstein didn't like the war, and in fact had written a manifesto against the war. And when Eddington hears this, he says, this is perfect. This is so important, we have to do something with it. The mission becomes more than a scientific quest. Like Einstein, Eddington is isolated because of his political convictions. Eddington sees this exciting scientific challenge as a way to show that scientists across enemy lines can support each other for a higher purpose. Eddington says, relativity is the most important scientific theory since Newton, and it's done by a German, and even better, Einstein, a brilliant, peaceful scientist. He wanted to stand up there and show the world and show his scientific colleagues that an Englishman will stand up for a German. And the Eclipse Expedition was the perfect opportunity. But the forces of interplanetary alignment may not wait for the war to be over. The next full eclipse will occur in June 1918, and it won't be visible in England, where Eddington is trapped by war. However, it will be seen in the state of Washington, practically in the backyard of a man who has been down this road before, William Wallace Campbell of California's Lick Observatory. There was going to be another eclipse in 1918, not very far from Lick Observatory in Goldendale, Washington in the west. If Campbell succeeds in photographing this eclipse, he can be the first person to determine if Einstein's theory is right or wrong. Because there was a war going on, no one else could go. The Europeans couldn't send an expedition, and so he had the field to himself. But Campbell also has a problem. They didn't have their equipment because it was still trapped in Russia. Campbell had been forced to abandon his state-of-the-art camera gear in the Crimea back in 1914 when World War I first broke out. So he improvises. Campbell went scrabbling around for equipment in Lick Observatory. They got a lens here, a tube here, and they cobbled together a couple of cameras for Golden Dale. The Lick party was forced to use substandard equipment. Campbell has no choice but to take the risk. He has a total solar eclipse all to himself and may never have another opportunity like this again. Campbell's party travels to Goldendale, Washington and gets ready for the coming eclipse. It was close to home, so the whole family went. Campbell's goal is to photograph the stars that emerge in the brief period when the sun is hidden by the moon. But on Saturday, June 8, 1918, it seems that the universe is once again not ready to yield its secrets. Clouds moved in, and it looked like he wouldn't even get observations, and Russia would be repeated, which he hated. And suddenly, just at the crucial time, when they needed a clear sky, the clouds parted. Campbell begins taking photographs of the spectacle. It starts when the moon first comes in contact with the sun and then starts to move over the face of the sun. The sun becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. 
until the last moment when the sunlight actually passes through the valleys between the mountains of the moon. And then this bright, brilliant beam of sunlight. And then the sun is entirely eclipsed. It's the blackest black you will ever see. My first eclipse, I, I literally lost my breath. It was like jumping in cold water where you go, <gasps> you know, you, you can't believe it. It is, it is breathtaking, <laughs> literally breathtaking. It's a, it's a gorgeous sight. It's just, wow. Most powerful experience that I've ever had in my life. The New York Times had a reporter and they wrote an article, Clouds Fall Away for Eclipse. There's a little subtitle, Test of Einstein Theory. This is the first time that an American newspaper mentioned Albert Einstein. Campbell assigns his most trusted astronomer, Heber D. Curtis, to analyze the photographs to prove or disprove Einstein's theory. Looking in, a star would have been visible, one of the stars that was to be measured. Uh, that star would have been very carefully centered on crosshairs in the eyepiece. Once that was done, the scales could be read in the X and Y directions, and a very precise position could be assigned to the star. From those numbers, it could be determined whether the star had appeared to change position. Einstein has predicted that the warped space around the sun will create an optical illusion, making the stars appear to move outward ever so slightly. Einstein predicted much less than a millimeter. Uh, this is not an easy measurement to make. Unlike most theories that people put forth, Einstein's general relativity makes very specific predictions. Very tight. Very, it's got to be this, and if it's not that, then the entire foundation of the idea has got to be discarded. Extremely precise, painstaking measurements. There was no wiggle room in Einstein's relativity because the idea, the idea that gravity is the manifestation of the curvature of space and time. You're going to say how much it curves? And what happens to matter or light in the presence of that curvature? Calculate it, make the prediction. If the prediction doesn't come true, you don't go say, okay, let me see if I can tweak the theory. Not in this case. You can see on these pages the kind of labor that Curtis had to endure in order to make these measurements. There's page after page after page of this. Some pages crossed out. All you needed was one experiment to show that any aspect of relativity would fail. And he'd have to go back to the drawing board completely. Curtis looks at the stars and sees nothing unusual. They all appear in their normal places, which can only mean one thing, Einstein is wrong. But Campbell is unwilling to risk his reputation on improvised equipment. Nobody wants to reveal an answer until everything has been double-checked. The best tactic is total silence until you're absolutely sure what you found. Campbell orders Curtis to check his results again and again. As Curtis works in quiet isolation atop Mount Hamilton, Europe is in chaos. The order of Europe changed completely. We have three empires that disintegrate within weeks of each other. On November 9th, 1918, Kaiser Wilhelm abdicates the throne. Einstein notes in his lecture book, class canceled due to revolution. In the immediate aftermath of the war, German scientists, including Einstein, are still not allowed to travel. But Eddington can. Einstein learns that he is going to Africa to photograph a solar eclipse expected on May 29th, 1919. As Eddington leaves Cambridge, the hallways are full of crutches and canes. Cambridge begins to fill up with students again, but they're crippled or they're maimed. He had no fanfare. He's heading off on a lonely adventure. Eddington believes in Einstein and hopes to bring back proof of his controversial theory but in California, astronomer William Campbell is preparing to deliver his own results, and the news 
appears to be devastating. On two fronts and two continents, the proof of 